Good morning and welcome to the Hobby Breakfast Show goes to a Star Wars Legion tournament, except it's not all of us, it's just OT. Um, on your screen in front of you, you can see the list I'm going to be taking. Um, I've played two games of Legion in my life um, and I don't fully know what I'm doing. Um, as anyone who's watched the Bat Rep will testify, um, I got the rules wrong and I misled Onod, which I apologise for. Uh, <laughs> Apology but <laughs> there we go. Um, so, in front of you is the list. Uh, it's themed around, um, generously themed around the battle, of, sort of the Battle of Endor and the Rebel forces that went there. It does have some Rebel veterans who were the troops that went to Hoth, but apart from that, it's fine. Um, so, I built this list around having some Ewoks. So, um, I've got four units of Ewoks in this one, including Wicket as the commander. And then I've got Leia, Luke, Rebel Veterans, Medium Blaster Troopers, some Rebel Troopers, Ewok Skirmishers, a Commando Strike Team, and then two units of Ewok Slingers with no upgrades. Do you two have any initial thoughts on this list with your vast knowledge of Star Wars Legion? Well, from what I observed uh, you doing to on odd in the practice game um it seems seems good you've got a lot of activations you've got a good variety of troops um you don't have a lot of armor piercing other than no so so that could be an issue i know that armor piercing has been a bit meta recently with the dark troopers so that could be a big a big problem for you maybe i have to say um this list uh, having only played two um games definitely isn't optimized um it's built around the gimmick, and I'll flash this on screen now so people can better understand what I'm talking about. Uh, it's built around the gimmick of generating a lot of dodge tokens. Um, so Leia and Wicket have a command card that gives them teamwork, which essentially means that anytime one of them gains a token, the other one gains a token of the same kind. Um, and Leia has an ability um, that allows her to give out three dodge tokens a turn, um, and she can also give herself a dodge token. So essentially, she can give Wicket and herself a dodge token, which gives Wicket and herself an additional dodge token. And then she can give someone else a dodge token as well. The issue with this is, I will end up with some units that have lots of dodge tokens. No friends. <laughs> yeah. And all I, I, I'm starting to realize all my friends. Based on the assumption that he had friends. Like, <laughs> any on now. Oof. Um. The problem I think will be is that I think my opponents will just shoot at the units that don't have all these dodge tokens on. Um, so what I've tried to do, and I haven't got these right now, but I'll put them up in, the, in a second, is I've tried to pick scenarios that rely on a unit having or controlling the objective. Because I'm, what I'm hoping is I can give one of the units with loads of dodge tokens the objective and it makes them really, really hard to kill. And it means my other units can go around and actually try and kill their units. Um, I don't have a lot of hitting power, if I'm being honest. Like my only real offensive outputs are Luke, Wicket, and the the, skir the skirmishes, really. Um, and as Mayor's highlighted, I don't have anything that deals very effectively with armor, apart from maybe Luke. But um, yeah, it's it's a very gimmicky list, and I think. I'm pretty quickly going to realize it's probably not that well optimized. Um, the tournament I'm going to is a very friendly tournament, or at least I'm hoping. Like, <laughs> Otherwise, I think I'm going to be a bit of a liability. And I'm kind of treating it as a bit of a learning exercise because even though I've spent quite a lot of time trying to learn the Legion rules, I don't really have that good an idea of what's going on. I'm sure everything will be fine and everyone will be really <laughs> friendly and you'll tell us all about it. Yeah. I think it will actually be fine and I'm I don't know I'm quite I'm really looking forward to like playing more games of Legion because like I've just got a ridiculously small sample size right now and um I think all of us were kind of sort of blundering around in the dark a little bit when we were playing Legion and um I don't think I actually have any idea how good I am or how good my list is in the game I'll find out or how bad or how bad indeed maybe I'm viewing it from the positive or I should be viewing it from the negative angle um, that's always where I'd start. 
Mm. But I think as a first tournament to go to, it, it should be really nice. There's only three games and I think there are like 12 people going and there are prizes for like six or seven positions. Um, so, you know, it's it's everyone gets a medal. So hopefully, you know, I'm, I might come home um, f with, with some kind of award, um, although possibly not the most significant award in the world. Do you know what the other players are bringing? Um, there will be um, because I'm, I'm on. I'm on. I'm on. Well, I've been lurking on a group chat. I'm generously on a group chat. I've yet to contribute anything. Um, I'm on a group chat with them. Uh, there will be a five o first with Anakin and loads of Arc Troopers. Um, and I don't think they're bringing any armor. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a fair fair assessment. I think you'll learn a lot. I think you'll enjoy yeah. it though. Um, I. I I think I will. I, I think, yeah, it's, um, I, I have, I have a bit of, basically, I just don't want to be a liability is, is essentially, I don't, I don't want to be like just blundering around and trying to work out what's going on. I, I think I, I think I broadly understand what's going on in the game, but, um, yeah, I guess proof of the pudding will be in the eating. Yeah. I don't think anyone will think you're a liability. I think they'll probably, <laughs> I mean, they'll probably not expect what you're actually bringing. Or no, I don't think it's meta. It and, yeah, they don't think they won't. They won't think it's meta for sure. Well, I don't know. It maybe it will become a weird meta where you're going. You never know. We should do predictions as well. How, how many games are you playing? Three games. So out of three games, how do you think you'll do? Um, I think I will win one game, um, and I think there will be a. I think there'll be one game where I win and there'll be one game where it'll be quite close and I think one game I'm going to get absolutely blown out because I think there are some armies like anything with lots of armor including the new Endor list um for the empire which is like almost entirely armor like that's quite popular um and it's quite new so I think somebody might bring it and yeah. like I I, just, I, I like the, the the best part of it is the Ewoks actually have a rule that makes them specifically worse against armor. Um, so they have when you're shooting armored targets, you, nice. like don't, don't, you, you don't get crits. So like even if I high roll, it doesn't actually matter. So um, yeah, brilliant. You but to see it. I think I think there are some fun combos here, and I think it could surprise a few people. Like uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how it goes. Yeah, I, I think I think you'll get at least one win. I think you'll surprise yourself, and you might even get a couple. Mm. I predict OT will win because he's a power gaming tryhard. <laughs> win the whole tournament. Yeah. That's like, <laughs> wow. That would be quite <laughs> quite a feat. Yeah, that's. <laughs> I also wouldn't yeah. be massively surprised if it happened, but what, okay. watch it happen. Watch it happen. Well, I'll, watch I will try. I'll try my best, but we're gonna I'll have like a, a wibbly wavy line here, <laughs> and it's gonna cut to me going, "Aha!" And we're back. Um. You you won't be able to tell, but three weeks has passed since we uh, initially recorded the first half of this video. Um, I'm joined once again by Onod and the Mayor. Hello. Hello. Okay. I, I can see the future. Okay. It turns out, yeah, he's 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 a bit of a prophet, um, despite knowing nothing about the game. But um, yeah, it, what makes it, me it, so good? <laughs> <laughs> it's his blissful ignorance that enables his insight. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to quickly spin through the uh, games one by one uh, very quickly because I uh, didn't take many pictures and had to get these from the TO so they don't look very good. I also played the first game on a um, board with no light above it so he had to turn his flash on to get all the photos. Um, then we'll finish off with a quick tier list and just my perspective on how the list went and how each of the models went. Would like to prefix all of this by the fact I've played five legions of game in my life, two of them against these schmucks, um, and the rest in a very non-competitive tournament. So please take everything I say with a pinch of salt. Basically, what he's saying is take his words verbatim <laughs> for uh, the truth. The man is a natural; he's never <laughs> lost. It's true. It's true. Oh, well, spoilers! I might cut that out, but we'll see. Um, cool. So, uh, game one. Um, we vetoed. We had exactly the same bid, and you'll both know what a bid um, is. Yeah, can you explain how that all works? <laughs> okay, so um, your bid is how much your army is under the 800-point limit. So um, for this uh, tournament, mine was 799, which really caused me a lot of distress. I couldn't quite get it to 800. Um, my opponent's in this case was also 799, so we had an equal bid. 
generally um if you are sort of the player with the lower bid you get the choice of being the blue or the red player um if you're the blue player, uh, they will use what's called your battle deck, which is where you get the conditions for the battle, it's where you get the map for the battle, and it's where you get the scenario for the battle, and then you each go through and veto. But in this case, uh, because we were even, we had to roll off, so I took shields, uh, he took the rest of the red dice, uh, and it came up on his side, so he chose to be the blue player, so we used his deck. Now, uh, he was quite a new player, uh, similar to me. I think he'd played four or five games. I'd only played a couple, but yeah, we're in a similar position in terms of lack of knowledge. So he had a very gene uh, generic battle deck and we uh, vetoed through and we end up with intercept the transmissions, disarray, which is corner deployment and clear conditions. So it's quite nice and straightforward. Um, so disarray, you can see in the top left, uh, it's basically where the you um, deploy in opposing corners and you have to have at least one unit in each of your deployment zones. Mm -hmm. um, intercept the transmissions is quite like a lot of SPG scenarios. You basically have three central fixed objectives and you just have to have more models closer to those at the end of the game. So a bit like, I don't know, hold ground or breakthrough or something like that where you have those ones there. Um, my opponent's army list, uh, you'll start to spot a theme here, um, as I did very quickly throughout the day. Uh, his list was Empire with an ATST. He had two units of speeder bikes, Veers, an E Web, which is like a sort of mounted cannon thing, and a few units of snowtroopers and one unit of stormtroopers. You can sort of see it there in the bottom left. Um, Essentially what happened was we each deployed in sort of like uh, the majority of our army in on the left hand side of the board. So I, you can see here in the bottom left and he up there in the bottom right, uh, sorry, in the top left. Um, and then we each put like a few token units in the other side. Um, yeah, and then from there, it, it was it was a fairly straightforward win, to be honest. Um, one thing neither of us realized uh, was how long each of the turns took. So we were playing um, two and a half yeah, two and a half hour games, um, and we only managed to get two turns in, which is pretty ridiculous now I think about it. Um, so it did; it wasn't really a proper game. Um, like we we both just sort of had a bit of light skirmishing. My units were quicker, so I got to the I got to the center of the board first and captured the three objectives. Um, you can see there next to the three O is sort of the kill points we each got. So I killed thirty five points worth. Um, and he killed 80 points worth, and that was it. Yeah. Do you think it's because it's um, rather than it being you go, I go, over a turn, it's like every single unit, did that slow the game down? Yeah, and our lack of knowledge did slow us down as well because we were having to ask lots of questions about how things worked. Um, and like that was fine because we were both in a similar situation. Um, mm -hmm. But like I think alternating activations does just make it slower. Um, and like I'm gonna, I'll, I won't talk about this now. I'll, I think I'm gonna do a full video on it. But like I have thoughts about comparing Legion to SBG and you know how it feels to play out a turn. Um, but yeah, all that really happened was like um, Wicket hid behind a barricade in the center, got shot at by the ATST, didn't take any damage. Um, Luke failed to kill a Jew back over two turns, which was a little humiliating. Um, it was yeah, it was quite an anticlimax. I really assumed he'd shred through it pretty quickly, but yeah, it, it was. It, there wasn't a lot to say with this one really. Like it was two quite new players not playing particularly efficiently, um, and I just had quicker units, so I got into the board, um, the board first. Was there anything that you were looking at, thinking this is going to be hard to deal with, or like, oh, I've got to be wary of them, or were you just like, because I know that you've probably not played against a Dubac or an ATST before. Oh no, that's wait, yeah, you've not yeah. played against either of those, have you? No. So were you like, I... shit? Tell me about those. I need to be yeah. worried. <laughs> um, I knew how all the units worked. I knew I couldn't deal with the ATST because I had very little stuff that um, deals impact damage. So that's crits against armor. Um, so basically, my entire strategy was like try and keep the ATST sort of like contained in the corner and try and get my units into sort of quite um, entrenched positions so that at least when they're shooting at me, I get some cover and a few of those hits go away. But yeah, just. Um, as I mentioned before, the sort of combination with layer and wicket and loading them up with dodge tokens does actually put in quite a lot of work against sort of some more heavy hitting ranged units. But um, yeah, all the ATSD really did this turn was um, obliterate my Ewok um, skirmishers on turn one, killed the entire unit by himself, and then shot at wicket and did no damage. So 
it wasn't really that impactful. I think later in the game, had we got to like turn five or six, it would have been a real problem because like I think it's got like eleven wounds or something, and I like I straight up couldn't have dealt with it as far as I could tell. Like unless I maybe got super lucky with Luke or something, I think I was pretty screwed. So you're quite fortunate that it you know took longer than you thought, really. I mean, a, a theme of the day was I didn't get any more than three turns in against any of my opponents. So it, like, yeah, it was it wasn't really a thing. Um, the second big picture you can see here is the tactical position my Ewoks took, hiding behind Slave One. Um, they weren't in range of anything, so they didn't actually do anything. But that was a cinematic shot that the um, TO took. How long is Legion meant to be? How many turns? Six. Six. So, six okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. No, it was. It was. Like I was anticipating a much longer game, but uh, it became pretty clear we were going to run out of time. So like, because I just had more agile units, I could get up quicker. Um, yeah, did it and... feel like you were like uh, having? Did it feel like you were going slow or? No, like l l genuinely, when the TO told us, I genuinely didn't believe him. I was like, I cannot believe two hours has passed and we've only played like a turn and a half. Like I was, I was pretty blown away. Um, I think again, I won't talk about this more now, but I think because. Uh, because it's alternating activations, you always feel like you're about to do something or you have quite a lot of agency. And like um, when you're getting shot at as well, because you're rolling defensive dice, you're always doing something and making decisions. And I think that just makes it feel like a more involved process maybe than SBG. So yeah, anyway, but I won't get into that now because that's I think I'll do a proper video on that. Um, let's talk about game two. Um, I should have lost this game. It was an absolute robbery that I won it, um, and I felt a bit bad at the end. Um, but there you go. Um, shit happens, I guess. Um, so in this one, it was a bit more of an experienced opponent. He'd played a lot of X-Wing before. He was a really nice guy, and he like he explained a few things to me and stuff like that. And like, yeah, but it was it was a nice game. But um, we um, uh, deployed again. He had the lower bid, so we played with um, his. Um, battle deck and we ended up with a uh, breakthrough which is where you have to end up in your opponent your opponent's deployment zone at the end so you get a point for every model um sorry every unit leader you have in your opponent's deployment zone um we then uh vetoed to get danger close which is what you can see in the top left it's sort of the long wraparound deployment so actually we were fairly close to each other's deployment zone which as you'll see in a second was quite important at the end and then we had something called minefield, which is basically where you just get to drop down two mines each sort of uh, in various positions across the board, which go off and deal sort of damage to everything in range one. Um, his list was Empire again. Um, and this time he had Darth Vader, Boba Fett, two units of bikes, and the rest was just basic troopers. Um, now, he didn't have many upgrades on his troopers because obviously with that selection of heroes and the bikes in there as well, he had to make some sacrifices to, on his basic units. But yeah, he only had eight activations, which is considered, I think, quite low in sort of this format. Anything you're particularly worried at the beginning of this one about? Um, Darth Vader. Um, it was... Oh, hang on. Before I say this, I need to check it's right in my head. Yes, I think it was Operative Darth Vader. So it was Operative Darth Vader, who I think is considered a bit better at the moment. Uh, he also just had a basic Imperial Commander, I think, running as his commander. So he had Darth and Boba, both as operatives. Um, and they're a bit better because they, they're a bit quick um, and like they can nip around the board. But um, Boba Fett's a huge problem. Like He's speed three. He can jump over anything. Um, he has got five black dice on his ranged attack. Um and yeah, so he he's just there to try and shred through my dudes. Um, but actually, like, I... My theory was here that, like, most of his stuff was really, really quite slow. Um, so I thought as long as I could, like, sandbag long enough um, and then nip in at the end, I might be okay. But then I worked out that with Boba Fett and with his bikes, he'd be able to just nip three units in right at the end, pretty much wherever he was on the board, because they move so quickly. Um so yeah, that was something I was thinking about quite a lot throughout the game. You think um, he took the bikes with that plan in mind? I think the, the bikes are super interesting because they don't deal that much damage um, most of the time, unless you roll really hot. Um, but like, they are just so useful as objective cappers. Like, they move so quickly because um, because they I think they're speeders or something. I can't remember what the exact rule is called, but they get a free move at the start of the turn, and then they can move twice more as well, and they move at speed three. So like literally like you can cover 
half of the board easily in one turn. So like if you are t tagging objectives, I think they are really useful. I think some people run them with like um, like disruptive comm stuff and things like that to try and break up order things because like they can just nip around the board and cause havoc. But I wasn't that worried about their damage. But yeah, I think they are really useful for capping objectives. They the have story to, of the... they like have to move though, right? Yes, yeah. So yeah. they they make a compulsory move at the start of the turn. Same with all all speedy units. Which like if they crash into something, they die. So like it's not always the easiest thing to do. But I think like experienced players do get really good use out of them. Um, and I think a couple of them in a unit is definitely a good idea. Yeah, I um, imagine if he played X Wing, he was probably fairly good at. Yeah, he was. Moving them he something. definitely was. Yeah. Um, story of this game. Um, I got absolutely annihilated apart from in the score at the end. Um, he... <laughs> so I, my list starts off with 10 activations. I finished with three activations, which was Luke, Leia, and Wicket. Um, they were all stood right next to each other in the bottom right corner, about half an inch inside his deployment zone. Um, in the last turn, he flung his bikes across the board into my deployment zone, but he couldn't quite get Boba Fett in, which meant I won a 3-2. Um, I the only unit I killed was Vader. Everything else on his side survived. Um, I didn't even deal any wounds to any of his other units because I just I realised it wasn't worth it. Um, and yeah, he just shot me to pieces. Um, so he lost two hundred points. I lost four hundred twenty five, which is over half of my army. But I won three two because I had three units in his deployment zone and he only had two. What what turn did this go to? Sorry, three. Uh, this made it to turn okay. three. Um, what, what what would have happened if you kept playing? Do you reckon you could oh, have, have lost? No, no, I'd have lost. Uh, like th that, it would have been yeah, completely over. Um, like one uh, one more turn, I'd have been able to get like four or five units in, and like my units wouldn't have died because like my three heroes together, and I'll talk about this in a second, were really really tough. But like he just shot all all through my rebels, um, and annihilated my Ewoks. It was yeah, it was pretty brutal, but um. Yeah, I think so. Um, what ended up happening is um, with this deployment, like you're kind of incentivized to kind of spread things out a bit. So he put Vader um, in response to me deploying my stuff. He put Vader down in the bottom right. And it was basically just Luke and Wicket um, charged in and killed Vader in like a turn and a half, basically, um, which was pretty nice. I think he was expecting him to last a bit longer, but that was kind of it. Um, and then yeah, just nipped my three heroes in at the end and snuck the victory. But yeah, it was this was this was this was a pretty lucky win, and like I I don't think I deserve to win this one. Um, well, I mean, you, you played the objective, and yeah. and the timing was just about right. So I think yeah. I think um, you know, without saying a win's a win, uh, a win's a win. <laughs> a win is a win. Yeah, it's true. It's true. But like yeah, th this was a game where I was just like yeah, I I, I kind of escaped, um, got away with that one. Uh, we'll quickly talk about game three, and then I'll just run through the tier list. Um, game three, this was my most experienced opponent. Like he definitely knew what he was doing. Um, and again, I I really struggled to deal with quite a lot of his army. So um, he had quite a sort of. I don't think his list itself was meta, but I think the theory behind the list it was quite meta, which is the two bounty hunter thing. So. Um, he had Veers as his commander, and then Boba Fett and IG-88 as two bounty hunters. Um, so basically what bounty hunters let you do is you put a little token on one of your opponent's heroes. If you kill that hero and you survive, you get a bounty token, which counts as a victory point towards the end. So they're seen as, as quite quite a meta thing to have. So, um, so he's net he's net decking basically. I don't he, think he this, doesn't this, know how to play it. This this was uh, no no he was he was good. Um, okay, but fine. like um, he wasn't net decking. He just had like a list that is in that like meta sphere and like yeah. I mean okay. I I think Boba Fett was in like uh, there were fourteen people there. I think there were like six Bobas. Um, he's clearly still very good despite the fact he's been put back up in points recently. Um, he also had two Jubacks and the rest was all basic troops. Um. Again, here, no upgrades on the basic troops. And I think that did, like, basically, if you don't take upgrades on basic troops, they don't actually deal that much damage. Like, they're fine for activations, but he, like, um, you can see in the photo here, there's a unit of Ewoks tucked in behind a little grey barrier. And basically, they survive, like, four or five turns, uh, not four or five turns, four or five rounds of, like, shooting from the opponent from, like, four or five units. Um, and they barely took a wound. Um, 
because like once they're in cover um they get to remove two hits a turn and like when you're rolling the basic unit you're not dealing that much more damage than that so the scenario it was breakthrough again so i really didn't play that much variety <laughs> um in this one um so in this this time I got to be the blue player because we had an equal bid, but um, I got to choose to be the blue player. Uh, so we played with my very basic deck. I only have the basic cards. Um, is the blue deck generally is that generally seen as better? Like like doing it that way around. Um, so so the blue player gets to use their deck, and that's so like generally if you've got all the cards, you will choose a battle deck that's orientated towards your list. So it's generally seen as like a positive to be the blue player. Um, okay. I don't. I think it's fairly well balanced because, like for instance, um, it means the blue player also has to deploy their units first. So like um, you alternate deployments. So blue would go, then red would go. Blue would go, red would go. At least that's how I played it. I'm not sure if it's correct, but that's how we played it. Um, so it does come with drawbacks, but like having control over whose deck you're using is is a big advantage. Um, and yeah, I think it would be like um choosing which maybe not that maybe not that strong but it's like choosing which three scenarios you'd veto from it from an spg like it would give you a bit of a bit of a leg up um but like i only have the basic cards so it wasn't that much of a leg up for me um and then we just vetoed as normal um we had disarray and clear conditions again so yeah this was pretty straightforward um kind of diagonal deployment uh he basically put um ig88 and his two dewbacks uh in the bottom left and everything else um in the top right i split my force um completely unevenly i completely sacrificed um my poor ewoks and my little units of rebel troopers um they were very sacrificial and everything else went up in the top left okay how many how many turns did you get done in this one uh, we managed to get three turns done. Um, wow! Okay. Which, yeah, which was the general consensus that like that was about right, or was everyone yeah. saying, "God, why are we so slow?" So there were some people who got tabled, um, but that I think was like unfortunate matchups. Um, most people got in. It looked like between two to four turns um, seemed about right. I don't think anybody got all six in. Um, Do you reckon uh, it's any- partly because I feel like in in the games that we've done, it did feel like the first two or three turns were like really impactful in terms of units killed. And then yeah. the last one, two, three turns are sort of positioning and not yeah. a lot of actual killing the, going on. The game is designed to speed up as the turns go on because you should be having fewer activations. Um, what tended to happen though, was that especially in the early turns, Maybe I can only speak for mine here, but um, people were being quite cautious, like hiding in cover a lot. So actually, with the exception of the second game, my activation count rarely took much of a hit. Like in the first game, I lost one unit. In this one, I think I only lost two or three. And that was over three turns. So like, I think actually what's meant to happen is that you're meant to lose maybe a couple more units in the first few turns, and then it would definitely speed up. Um but yeah, like when you've got two armies, both with 10 activations, it does take a while. Um, like that's 20 individual things you've got to fit in. And then you've also got to pick like whether you want to um, take an order token from the stack or when you want to pick one that's got an order token already on the field. Or like, you know, if you've got the case of like improvised orders, maybe you want to shuffle it back in and use a different one. So like there are loads of decisions to be made. And so it does take a fair bit longer than I think people are anticipating. Um, but yeah, in, in game three, I think it'd be fair to say we were both trying quite hard. Like, um, I was definitely like trying to think about how I could actually win. And I think my opponent was definitely thinking as well. And like, so there was a lot of time to just pause and think about what we were going to do. I suppose you'd probably rather it that way and that you both play an even number of turns than yes. you rush it and one of you loses because you yeah. felt like you were rushing. Yeah, yeah. And like, I think people were really good about um declaring what we would do if we ran out of time because it became pretty clear by like the end of the first game we were like actually we're going to need to make a plan about what happens if we do run out of time and i think that was something that was quite well sort of generalized across the tournament in that like we'll basically just um it when when the bell gets called we won't necessarily finish the turn but we'll make sure we've had an even number of activations for that turn so we've at least had sort of roughly a fair opportunity to play it through Okay, so it's not like in because obviously SPG, 
finishing a turn doesn't take as long as it might in yes. in yeah. Legion. So yeah. so you do it in number of activations as opposed to um uh like actually finishing the turn, is that right? That's how we did it. I think okay. I imagine in like a proper turn I should stress this was quite a friendly tournament. Like in a proper tournament, I imagine you'd have to finish the whole turn, but I'm not quite sure. Um because like um making sure you've each had the same number of activations is fine if you've got two armies that have roughly the same. But for instance, if you've got like a very elite republic list against yeah. a very spammy droid list, yeah, activations I was just thinking that. mean the same thing. Anyway, yeah, that's true. We digress. Um, so what happened in the game? Um it was a six four win. Um Basically, I decided to blitz my opponent's stuff in the bottom left, which was the Jubax and IG-88. Um, I, I couldn't deal with the stuff in the top right, so I just I just kind of left it um, and just let him slowly move up. Um, so, yeah, I think it was interesting here. Like, my opponent seemed to think I would be forced to come to him. Um, and that wasn't how I interpreted it, because my interpretation was we had the same number of activations so as long as i could kill more of his units than he killed of mine and then stand in the deployment zone i would win so yeah i basically isolated the units in the bottom left and i tried to kill them um i had two units who actually held out really well um the ewoks have got a rule that means they improve light cover to heavy cover so i just stuck them behind that little um barricade thing for the entire game and they just absolutely tanked a load of um imperial shooting um turns out imperials when they're only shooting white dice not super scary um he won so, really yeah well well with with better saves and with, yeah. a, with a nice little special rule but yeah I, I agree actually and like i think the thing that perhaps caught him out is that i never bothered to shoot back like i think because he was basically moving up in cover as if i was going to take some shots but right. like all i did with my ewoks was just dodge and stay in cover and it just meant that they were really survivable. I think it delayed him for a few turns. Um, That's really but interesting. Yeah. Because Airwalks are so cheap as well. Like, yeah, you yeah. don't care. Like, yeah, yeah. sure, use a unit or game to shoot at them and slowly yeah. advance. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, and I, I made quite a... I'll talk about the play I made in a second at the end, but it, I, was, I was pretty happy with it. It was a pretty batshit crazy play. Um, but yeah, essentially, like, he just didn't have an answer to Luke. Luke, he's really fucking good. Um, he because he's got charge and force push and shit. He can just fuck around with stuff. Um, and with his card, Son of Skywalker, which I think is one of the best in the game, and I'll explain why in a second. Um, he was able to deal seventeen wounds in three attacks, which some would say is quite a lot. Um, and he was able to insta kill IG eighty eight and a Jubak with help from some skirmishers. Um, Wicket was all right. Um, I I'll explain how I use Wicket in a second. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. This one was just like... Like, Boba Fett's really scary because he's so manoeuvrable. Viz is a really good commander because he dishes out some aims and stuff. But like, actually, not that much stuff died and I never felt super worried. So yeah, it was quite nice. Um, I did some sort of sacrificial moves at the end. So um, he, on the last turn, he gave orders to Viz, um, and he was one of the few units that would have been in range to move into my deployment zone. So I had two uh, Ewoks left in the Ewok skirmisher unit. So rather than staying in cover, I charged straight out um, and tagged Veers, which meant he was unable to move into my deployment zone. So while he was able to kill them, it meant he wasn't able to move somebody into my deployment zone, and that gave me a slightly bigger margin of victory in the end. Um, but yeah, like I killed a bit more than died here. Yeah, I think it was really tricky for my, my opponent because like um the the rebel force because especially because i had so much scout in my list as i explained earlier it was able to just be quite flexible and it meant that like if my opponent deployed in a certain place i could just charge up and like um sort of maneuver the battle into where i wanted it to be um but yeah it there, there are definitely changes i've made to the list and i don't think i'll put these in these in the video but i think if you see me at a tournament i won't be running exactly this list again because there are a few units as i'll explain now with an elegant segue. So, tier list, because my brain is broken and I can only see things, things as having value if they are in a tier list. Nerd. Should we start, should we start at the top or the bottom? Um, top. Top. Um, Luke Skywalker. <laughs> Just ignored, man. <laughs> okay. 
I'll, I'll alternate. I'll go top, then bottom, and I'll, I'll just I'll do it in a really confusing yeah. way. I'll do it in a really confusing way. And get well, let's start in the middle. Let's start in the start, middle. Start in the middle. Okay. Um, no, I'm going to start... Uh... I'll start. I'll start with the rebel snipers. I'll start at the bottom. I'll, I'll placate Mayor because I don't care what on other things. Um, snipers did fuck all all game. Um, the one time they moved out, they got shot to pieces because there's only two of them. Maybe I just didn't use them correctly. But as far as I can tell, they're a bit shit, and they will not be being in the list next time. Uh huh. Is what it is. Um, next unit, right at the bottom of average, were the the skirmishers. So that's the ranged Ewoks. Um. They're really nice because they've got black dice to attack, but the problem is they're only range two. Um, and what that meant was, is a lot of the time, in order to shoot my opponent, I'd have to have moved out of cover. And because the only thing they have going for them is they've got a rule called um, low profile, which basically improves their cover from light cover to heavy cover. So they remove two hits from each attack rather than one hit. Um I wasn't that incentivized. So a lot of the time, all the skirmishes did was sort of hide behind a box and not die, which is fine, but like not really that relevant for what they need to do. Um, but people were definitely scared of them. Like six black dice in attack for 35 points is pretty good value. So, That's fucking yeah. terrifying for 35 points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think they, it's interesting because I, I didn't really perceive Ewoks as being that good value before I played this, but like... They're not bad, and they do pack a bit of a punch, so I can understand why people are a bit scared, but yeah, n not not brilliant. Um, next one up is the Medium Blaster Trooper. This is like the emplacement trooper that the um, the Rebels get that comes with the Rebel Veterans. They were fine. Um, like, they're a bit flimsy, and them not being able to move and shoot really does suck, um, and it did limit how useful they were in the army. Um, people really hate them, though. Like, they're a magnet for shooting, which was quite nice, and really, like, distracted from the rest of my list. So they were good as, like, a sacrificial piece, but not much utility beyond that. Did you find um, they were... Could you kind of use them as an anchor, if nothing else? Or, like, I know you're saying of, you couldn't really move around and use them, but... Yeah. The problem is... Um, what rebels have going for them is they have like quite shit defense die, but they often have good dodge synergy. I'm doing another SBG comparison here to try and um, de alienate our listeners. You know, Iron Guard? Yeah. yeah. You know how their defense six, and you know how that's pretty good. But the problem is because they're valuable and because they're lower defense than the rest of your army, they always get shot first. It's the same yeah. thing with these. The same thing with these dudes. They're not that flimsy, and they they've got white dice with surge to defend, so they're not trash. But like, they are just an attractive target to shoot at. Um, and so yeah, this was the unit that died most often. I think they died twice. Um, but yeah, like um, talking about the rebel veterans, like it's really nice getting fire support with them because it means that if say if your opponent's in cover um, and you've got a full unit of rebel veterans, you can put in like like eight black dice and four white dice um, if you've got the CM024 gun. And, like, that's a lot of dice to be throwing at your opponent in one go. So they're not bad, but, like, yeah, I think those units just didn't didn't do anything particularly amazing. Um, next one's the Rebel Troopers. Um, these guys are really nice just because of the nimble keyword. So, like, whenever they use a dodge token, they get another dodge token. Um, again, they're kind of just like an activation filler. Like none of the, none of the. I think one thing I take away from this is none of the basic units did anything that exciting this game. Which maybe actually I'm being a bit harsh now I think about it, because like Luke costs six times more than these units, and I'm in my head comparing them to him. So maybe that's not fair. But um, yeah, they were fine. Like the Rebel Troopers died in game three, but that's just because I put them in a really stupid position in front of a bounty hunter and a Jewback, and they just got eaten. Um, and that was kind of my fault, but. Is what it is. Okay, I'll carry on then. Um, Ewok skirmishes. I don't think these guys are OP, but I think they're really, really, really good um, because um, in melee they get six black dice. What the fuck? <laughs> uh, what, Which uh, what? some would say is similar to Luke. And in fact, if you take the axe upgrade with them and you give them tenacity. They occasionally will be rolling five black and two red with pierce and impact. Wow. For like 60 points. And that seems like good. it's <laughs> it's pretty insane. Um, and like, 
Yeah, it's, so basically, um, them and Wicket managed to um, kill a Dewback in one turn. Um, Wicket did two wounds, and I was like, okay, I'll move the skirmishes in, maybe I'll get lucky. Uh, and I did seven wounds with the skirmishes, and I was like, ooh, that's not bad. Um, and my opponent was like, yeah, my Dewback's dead. And I was like, yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, they, they've done that. That's, that's fair enough. Um, so yeah, they pack a punch. Um, they don't have any ranged option, which... Um, is a problem. <laughs> um, you basically have to keep them in cover the entire time and hope you're able to lure your opponent into range. Um, but when you do, they're really good. Um, and again, similar to what I think Mayor was saying earlier about like not really caring if one dies. Um, in these units, a, an Ewok costs like six or seven points. So if your opponent so the spends... same as a B one. Yeah, yeah. So if your opponent's spending like, you know, a couple of units shooting at them, you're not that worried if a couple of them die because, yeah, you've lost a few dice in melee, but like they're not meant to be sort of those guys who you're super worried about. Um, yeah, so I, I really enjoyed the Ewoks. And like, it does make me think that the Bright Tree Battle Force might be better than I've given it credit for. But um, yeah, we'll see if that's. Yeah. I think that ironically, the one thing holding it back is the, um, the massive cost of buying Bright Tree. Um, if you want like, a 10 activation Ewok list that's going to cost you like 400 quid. Um, so yeah, wow. your decision. Um, Leia. I'll do Leia and Wicket together because they came as a pair. Um, Leia didn't attack anyone all game. Um, she didn't take a wound all game. Um, and she only used her command cards once or twice, I think, um, beyond the initial command card. Um, what she did do was give out a shitload of dodge tokens, and um, that's just insanely good. Um, especially, so um, her and Wicket have the keyword nimble, which means whenever you spend a dodge token, you get a dodge token back. Um, and if you put Wicket in cover, there's often a case where you spend like a dodge token or two to save a couple of shots to get through cover, but then you just dodge token them away and you get a dodge token back. Um, and you know how in SBG, one of the most frustrating things to do is to um, have to roll will to resist like a free cast from a caster. Say like, you know, Saruman just throwing out a free transfix or whatever. I think that's how it felt for my opponents when I was just sitting behind cover and just occasionally th like throwing out a dodge token, but then immediately getting that same dodge token back. And they were just like, well, what's the point? And I was like, yeah, actually, I can understand why this might be frustrating. Um, yeah. I would say the Wicket layer synergy that I talked about um, it feels like ages ago, but actually in this video is only about 15 minutes. Um, <laughs> the synergy oh, I... is... <laughs> it's an abstract concept. It is. Um, the synergy is really good. Um, it doesn't do a lot, but it is very good. Um, like, what I, what I kind of prophesized happening um, did end up happening, like... I put all the dodge tokens on them and then my opponents just didn't attack them. And I was like, okay, that's fine. But like, I've spent quite a lot of points for this and it's not doing anything. So I think in a future iteration of the list, Wicket will be being removed from the list and something more effective will be going in. Um, the problem with Wicket is he just doesn't deal that much damage. Um, he's only got two red and a black, which is fine. Um, and like, there was actually one turn, which is the turn I killed Jew back on, where he'd been wounded and he got tenacity, and suddenly he's rolling three red and a black, which is actually quite nice. Um, but yeah, he just doesn't deal that much damage. But he's really useful as just an annoying guy running around because he's got um, speed two, he's unhindered, so he can go over terrain and through rough terrain and stuff. And he's got relentless as well, so he can move, move, and then attack as well. And so that was really good for um, just tying units up. Do you not think removing him is almost kind of defeating the point in the army, though? Because, like, sure, the way I'm seeing this army is is the kind of point is, is that nothing does anything, especially. But because you just have so much stuff, you basically just win via out-surviving your opponent rather than necessarily. Yes. So it yeah. feels like removing stuff which is really good at sticking around for very little points would make the mm -hmm. army weaker overall. So Wicket in this list, I think, was at like 85 or 90. Um, basically, what I resolved to do um, was take out the snipers, who I think were like 45. Um, and 90 plus 45 gives you 135, which is roughly the cost of Din Djarin, um, who is possibly the person who I'll be planning to bring in, with or without Grogu, I'm not decided yet. Um, oh, the difference... you can't not have Grogu. 
Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, uh, jury's still out, but yeah, I, I I think I would put him in actually if I was. You can see a good but... line of sight shenanigans. At the he does. He does. He does. Only if you're running the Amban, which I wouldn't be. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think Din is better because he um is just a bit more survivable than Wicket if he doesn't have the dodge tokens on him. Um, because there are a few times I had to send Wicket in ahead, um, without Leia being in range because all the dodge shenanigans was quite close range. Um, and that meant that Wicket is suddenly only five health with white defense die, like he does surge to defend, but it's only five health. Whereas Dinjarin, if you take Grogu, is six health with red dice with surge to defend. Um, and like that's really tough, that's like Jedi level tough. And he's also got some immune to pierce shenanigans as well. Um, so I think he would just be a bit more survivable and maybe carry a bit more of a threat. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed this and like. Yeah, Wicket and Leia just felt really good. And Wicket was really good at like charging and tying up a unit. So that turn I was able to kill Vader. Wicket went in first, didn't do much damage, but was able to like tie up Vader. And because you then have to like disengage or whatever, and that would cost you your turn, he opted not to do that. And then you're attacking Wicket, who's got like three or four dodge tokens on him, so you're not actually dealing that much damage. So yeah, I think Wicket is good, um, but yeah, didn't quite have enough def- offensive output for what I wanted him to do. Mm. Um, can you get your offensive output elsewhere? Like, because mm. I feel like obviously you don't want to overload with heroes to the point where you're losing out on a lot of their command cards. But I don't know. I feel like there's just the the combination between Wicket and Layer is just just feels really exploitative and uh, yeah. good. So <laughs> <laughs> I think it is good um, as long as and I I I'll. I'll talk about this in a second, but like it's good as long as you can actually get Leia to do it at a time that's relevant. So um, basically, that synergy is great as long as you're getting it off early in the turn. If because I only had one, um, because I the, the options were like Wicket or Leia um, in the commander option, it relies on drawing one of those quite early in the turn if I'm taking them from the stack, if I haven't given them an order. So suddenly, if they're coming out quite late, um, there's nothing to dodge, and um, it's not like with aim tokens when you can use them proactively. You can only ever use dodge tokens reactively, apart from if you're a soaker and using your your rule. But like, basically, what it means is, unless you're getting it out ahead of time, it doesn't do anything. Whereas, like with an aim token, if you're able to give that out and then you can make an attack, you can actually do something. Um, so that's that's sort of what I'd say. Um, and like. There were definitely a few times where I felt like I didn't have much control over the order things were happening in, and I was quite reliant on just like a bit of luck rather than like any inherent synergy sort of carrying me through. Yeah, I can I can see that. That makes sense. And I think the more you play the lists and find out what's good, um, the more you know you'll get better with them. Yeah. Um, but the the final one, uh, Luke. Uh, I don't think he's OP. I think he's insanely good. Um, and I think. I actually, I, I am ashamed to say I, I math hammered this before the event um, and I didn't put it in the video because I thought I'd come across as a massive nerd if it didn't work. Um, but I think he's one of the most damaging characters in the game. Um, and I think I've actually worked out that if you use his command card correctly, I think you can insta kill virtually every hero in the game. Um, so the combo. Um, is uh, you've got Luke with seven black attack dice. Um, ideally, you'd have him wounded, so then he procs tenacity, which gives him an extra um, red attack dice as well. Um, if he attacks with that, he deals an average of, I think it's about five and a half wounds, um, and it goes up to just over six if you've got an aim token. Um, what you can see in the top right is his command card. Why is that command card so good? Because uh, you can attack twice. Yes. Why else is it good? Because uh, it's a one pip. Why is that good? Because you go first. Yes. So, so what you do? So you go last in your previous turn. Yes. And then and twice you, so, immediately. Yeah. And, three times. and then they die. Um. So what what I did, and I pulled this off twice, is Wicket goes in first, ties up their hero. Um. They either attack Wicket using their action, and they don't do that much damage. Or they disengage, but that still likely means they're in range of Luke. And because Luke has force push, he can bring people into range and attack them. 
Uh, so Luke charges in, deals, you know, let's say five and a half wounds once, um, and then you play this and you attack them twice more, which means on average you're dealing roughly 17 to 18 wounds. If you roll on mm. average, there is no hero in the game that I'm aware of without dodge tokens that should survive that um, on average. And what that means is, like, as long as you don't roll like absolute shit, um, you can just use Luke. And if you know, if you can maybe got another hero to help, that's great to just insta kill any hero in the game. Um, and that seems really powerful to me. Um, I think. Seems good, yeah. It's not it's not always reliable and like there's definitely some variance in there, but like yeah, it, it the damage output was crazy. Um and like he he just has loads of cool stuff. Like he has deflect, which means people are really unlikely to shoot him. And again in this list, because I was handing out so many dodge tokens, and because I put four for three flexes on him, he nearly always was holding a dodge token, which means you know, if you shoot at him, it's actually quite statistically likely he'll probably block most of it and you might take a wound or two back. So people were really reluctant to shoot at him. He is expensive. He costs like 220 points, so he's more than like a number of the the units in this list put together. But like, yeah, he does so much and hits so hard. Um, I really enjoyed using him, and like, yeah, I think we'll definitely plan to build future lists around him. You think having the um, wicket and layer giving him dodge tokens um, made like a big difference, or do you reckon he would have survived without them? It was actually slightly annoying, though. There were a couple of times where I left him out um, to try and get him to take a wound. Um, but my opponent, because I nearly always had a dodge token on him, just didn't shoot at him. So in some ways, it was almost counterproductive. But like, yeah, it's it's a nice thing to have. But he does have Master of the Force. So you can just every turn, if you want, just drop yourself a free dodge token if you're not using it for anything else. And that, that felt really good. Um, the other thing is, is once he's engaged with another unit, he then can't be shot. So... Um, even if, unless your opponent wants to move into melee with him as well, which seems like not a great idea, but you know they can if they want to. Um, yeah, he's 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 basically invulnerable. So yeah, he felt really powerful. Um, yeah, um, I think I guess you almost don't want to bother attacking him unless you know you can kill him quite quickly yeah. because he's still going to be at full offensive capacity. So it's almost like, well, I don't want to. I'm not even going to bother shooting at him because yeah. he's still going to kill me next turn. Yeah. Um, well, and he's I got guess... seven health and he's got red defense die and he can yeah, deflect and all that cool stuff. Like, yeah, he felt really powerful. Yeah, yeah it's going to be hard to take him down. Mm. Um, and like people, people were scared of him. People were like, yeah, shit. Like in, in, similar to my reaction to the ATST, they were like, yeah, I don't really have an answer for that. And there, you know, there was a guy with like, you know, Vader and Vader knocking around and a couple of bounty hunters. And he was like, yeah, I just, I'm not sure I can deal with Luke. And I was like, yeah. He's, he's a pretty scary dude. Um, wow. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know. I think the only unit that really surprised me with how bad it was was the snipers because they literally did nothing and they may as well not have been in the list. Um, there was actually was a it turn just right. Was being unlucky or lack of targets? No. I, I mean, like, they're just not really that. Re like, the problem is they only roll two dice and they're quite high quality dice, but the, the, I say high quality. On the Rebels, it's a black and a white and you do surge to crit, I think, or surge to hit, but like. Yeah, they're, they're just not brilliant. Um, and it it feels like a very passive usage of points. And um, my interpretation of Legion, as might be wrong, is that you need all your units to have some kind of active role. So um, they need to be doing something to help you win the game. It's not enough just to have them sitting passively. So like my skirmishes, even though they were, you know, very passive, they were doing something because they were drawing fire and they were a bit of a concern for my opponent to deal with. Whereas, like, the snipers, there was one there was one act, um, round of activations I legitimately just forgot they were on the board because I was just so, like, done with just, like, bothering to roll with them. I was like, yeah, I... I and when my opponent's like, do you want to roll with them? I was like, nah, it's fine, we'll just leave it because, yeah, they just didn't wow. feel super impactful. <laughs> um, but, yeah, roll. that was just me not playing optimally. But, um, yeah... No, it was cool. And very much a good tournament. Enjoyed playing in it. Some really nice people. Um, felt like a good environment. Would go again. And yeah, if, genuinely played seven and a half hours of Legion and it really flew by. Um, it was it was really enjoyable. Um, so yeah, would very much recommend. Well, that's great. Um, were, there, were there any points in the tournament where you thought, oh, you know, um, I've been playing that wrong or oh, this I'll definitely remember 
this for future or um, any tips you can give uh, the scrubs that are me and Onod is basically what I'm asking. My tips would be, um, depending on, I, I, I'm not going to give any competitive tips because I'm not sure I'm qualified, but like in terms of um, the mechanics of the game, it's always better to ask before you try doing something because um, there were a couple of times where we played something, especially to do with melee, how we thought it was meant to be played and it wasn't. Um, and we did try and like reverse those, but especially in my first game, that did end up taking a little bit of time. Um, so like people were really willing to help and the TO was really good. So we probably should just have asked, but we were like, yeah, it's probably like this. And then like, we, we worked out that there was no way it could work like that and it wasn't the correct way to do it. So just ask loads of questions. Um, like there are loads of keywords in the game, but like once you use them a few times, you start to understand, you know, what Pierce does and what Impact does and what your surge tokens do and all that stuff. So it starts to feel a lot more, a lot smoother um, after your first couple of games. Um but yeah, just just ask, ask ask people first, and people normally have like a really like good way of explaining it because they've probably played like twenty or thirty games or whatever. Yeah. Well, we're going to be asking you lots of questions, I'm sure, in our games. Like, <laughs> how do I beat you? <laughs> how do I kill Luke? <laughs> so how do I stop Luke we'll touching see. my thing? We'll, we'll see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think I'm not sure I'd know how to deal with Luke. Like, I've played with him, and I wouldn't know what to do. Like, I. You, you, you just keep your big hero away from him, I guess. But yeah, good Build fun. Build me an OP separatist list. That's what I want. Yeah, yeah. I don't think an OP separatist list exists, unfortunately. Oh, I hate to be the okay. bearer of bad news, but um, well, wow. there were not there were not many separatist lists at this tournament, and I think no. they, they, they've dropped they've dropped down a bit, as it were. Yeah, I'm sure. Well, I, I, this has made me want to play Legion more. Um, yeah. Listening to your experience and. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to paint my fucking model so I can buy some more. Honard, how do you feel? Um, don't know, I guess I'm a bit hungry. Okay, cool. Thanks for that. You're welcome. Um, cool. Um, any closing, any final thoughts before we go? We could comment on our predictions. So I predicted I would win one, draw one, and lose one. Um, Mayor didn't really make a prediction, but we'll generally I, say I, did. You, I, th I, I, I think did. you came down on two wins eventually, didn't you? Yes, two two yeah, wins and two loss. Wins loss. Yeah, and Onod predicted three wins. And um, I was right. Yeah, uh, three wins. Sadly, I didn't win the whole thing. Um, yeah, it was it was very close. We were we were basically tied on points at the end, but unfortunately, game two really came back to cost me because um, when there's sort of close or even ties, it's calculated on how many points you killed, so what your points difference is. And that basically meant that my points difference was actually negative, despite having won three games, um, which was a bit surprising. Um, but yeah, it it was it was a really good game and got some very cool cards, which I'll put up on screen now. Got some cool limited edition cards from the tournament, which was really good. I guess it's quite nice that you don't have to kill stuff to win games of Legion. Indeed, but you don't have to kill stuff to win games of SPG. No, it certainly helps though. Um, I would agree. And like, I think um, game two was a really good example of just like, I think it was the only way, especially in that last term that I could have won was the way it happened. And like, I think I just basically put it, I put it all on red and I was like, sod it. We're just going to, this is the only way I can possibly win this game. Went for broke, killed Vader, moved everybody in. And that was, that was kind of it. Um, like he had seven activations left. I had three, but apparently I still was able to come home with the win. That's very cool. No, um, right. Well, thank you, Anand and Mayor, for, for joining me. I've valued your, your insight. You're welcome. <laughs> and um, yeah, um, new Legion video will definitely be coming soon where I'll talk about my um, my thoughts on MESBG versus Legion and uh, try and ruffle a few feathers uh, in the way that I so often do. Um, but yeah. Is that going to be an investigates? I think it might be. I think it's I think it's going to end up being about half an hour long, possibly a bit longer. Um, I'm just going to go through what, what I think the differences and um, benefits and downsides of the systems are and why I enjoy aspects and why I'm objectively right and why your opinion is wrong. Um, and that should be a pretty healthy tone for the video. Excellent. Uh, right. Well, thank you for listening. Well, for watching, actually, this is a video. And um, 
We'll see you for the next one. Thanks, guys. Bye.